Okay, Bhavacha. We open with a word of prayer. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Snehavanai Sargi Bidavi. ഞങ്ങൾക്ക്ഹായിക്കണമെന്ന്ാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു ഇതിലേക്ക് വഴി നടത്തണമെ ഞങ്ങളെ എല്ലാവരെയും സംബന്ധിക്കുന്ന എല്ലാവരെയും ദൈവകൃപയിൽ ദൈവാത്മാവ് പരിപാലിക്കണമേ വഴി നടത്തണമെന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു ഞങ്ങളിൽ കൂടെ മറ്റുള്ളവർ കർത്താവിനെ സ്നേഹിപ്പാനും സന്തരക്ഷിതാവായി സ്വീകരിപ്പാനും ഇടയായി തീരണമേ എന്ന് ഞങ്ങൾ പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു സകലവും മശിയാമരാൻ എന്നാമത്തിൽ പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു കൃപയോടെ കേൾക്കണമേ Uh, from a personal experience uh, leela knows it all. i'm sorry geetha knows it all. it's about leela anyway uh day before yesterday no the day before day before nine uh, geetha and her husband and i drove down to coimbatore to the word is inter inter my dad's ashes uh, i thought my brother in law had the spelling wrong the first time i looked at it but then i checked up he normally doesn't get spellings wrong but i checked anyway inter ashes means to put the ashes where in their final resting place i n t e r so we interred apachan's ashes in in the uh, grave that he had uh, already purchased from the church uh, in coimbatore and we came back uh, on the way back we stepped into a flat there which is now going to be given on rent from january and uh, over the years leela has been uh, squirreling away stuff brought from kuwait okay uh, and uh, so i i brought some of the stuff there, uh, back and uh, they, day first the evening i was opening up those packets and uh, i was overwhelmed at the the amount of crockery already there are there's enough in geeta's house there's enough in kuwait which i brought in the uh, and then coimbatore also because that's what that was a base for many many years okay so i was thinking my god plates that her dad brought from malaysia starting from there to different different sets nothing very ultra fancy or anything but good stuff okay and uh, thinking my god she saved all this for a life in kochi okay or or pinetor i'm not sure what the final desire was i think she still had a soft spot for pinetor uh, and uh, none of it could be used i mean uh, and uh, immediately the thought came uh, but god took her to a better home you know i mean however good this home is i'm quite happy with it by the way uh, it does not compare it, it is no shadow on what god has for each one of us okay uh it says we cannot imagine we cannot comprehend what is waiting for us so god took her there and i'm thinking oh my god you know she over the years we were there for 40 years and maybe not the first four or five years because in those years she was into gold in a big way okay but uh, after the first five years she stopped gold of any kind uh and it was more into crockery and stuff like that i'm thinking she didn't get a chance to use it and what am i going to do with this i mean in the afternoon which is a basic time i have any meal i just put everything into one plate and put it in the microwave one plate okay so what do i do with the probably 200 of plates that i have here and at the same time i actually wept during that time thinking that you know uh, these were her plans but it didn't work that way uh, at the same time immediately after that i felt what a waste what a waste okay okay plates are not expensive like gold biscuits or anything like that but nevertheless i felt this could have been used better the money okay and and uh, i just wanted to tell you all that okay many of us are still in kuwait i'm sure you all have saved a lot of crockery and stuff like that but uh, rain was now back uh, back at home i don't know maybe she can tell us how much of that do you use you know i, I cannot imagine okay i'm a bachelor unless i go into a massive partying mode i don't see how i'm going to use any of these you know so anyway i just thought i'll tell you all because hey, first of all i was uh, you know that i was overcome by the fact that we are the ones who propose but god disposes okay uh, and and we need to understand that that let's not store up treasures for us on earth this is what the word of god says store up treasures for yourself in heaven and and it came it came and hit me in the face 3 days ago seriously okay 
uh, what for? What's all this for? Okay, I enjoy a comfortable life. I'm not saying no. I have a big TV. I really enjoy it. Okay, but sometimes we might overdo it. Sometimes we might overdo it. And we have to be very careful because we are called to be custodians of the money that God gives us. Okay. Anyway, that is just a... By the way, you guys can comment later. I don't want to uh, take up time on the Bible study. You can text and... Uh, let us know what you think. Sharon, this is a message for you also. Which I would say, I mean, Leela was not extravagant by any means, okay? But nevertheless, I see this is a bit too much. Maybe it was the 40 years that we were there, but uh, whatever, you know. Uh, we could have managed that a little better, I think. Because once we bring it here and put it away in the cupboard, we forget about it. And then the next time we go to the shop, we see something and, oh, this will look fantastic on our dining table. Okay, let's go get it. So I, I think we need to rethink on, on how we do our buying. Okay, uh, I just advise uh, at this point. Okay, so Bhavachan has already prayed and we're looking at uh, the second part of James chapter two. And uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty straightforward, again, in your face kind of, uh, uh, a few verses, so I'll ask uh, Prem, have you got your Bible with you? No, Prem. Amen. So, who's got? Sorry, Amen. Unmute yourself, and if you can read from 14 to 26. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. 14 to 26. Which one? Oh, Roy, that's uh, James chapter 2, verses 14 to 26. Yeah. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself is not accompanied by action, it's dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his, act, his faith and his actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did? According to the spies and send them off in a different direction. As a body without spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Okay, good. Very clear. I think any version, I, I, you will not have any confusion about what he is saying there. Okay. Uh, but at the same time, confusion could arise because another apostle says things slightly different elsewhere. Okay. So let me just go to my notes. Okay, and then we'll take it from there. Okay. Yeah, so basically this section uh, discusses the relationship between faith and works. Okay, and uh, the overall theme that James is trying to put across is that works are the key to a vital Christian faith. Okay, uh, and 2.14, let me just get that. Okay. It's a very confusing verse actually, 2.14. What use is it, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but he has no works? Can faith save him. Okay. Now the word save equates to salvation. And uh, so there's some confusion about that. If you look at, uh, uh, I, I don't want to go into detail there, but uh, Romans 4 verses 1 to 12, maybe I can read it quickly. Let me just see. Okay. This is what Paul says about faith. Okay. Romans 4, 1 to 12. Yeah, I think I'll read it quickly. Okay. What then? Shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh, has found? 
what then shall we say he has found? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now to the one who works, his wage is not credited as a favor, but as what is due. But to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited as righteousness. Just as David also speaks of the blessing on the man to whom God credits righteousness, blessed apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds have been forgiven and whose sins have been covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will not take into account. Okay, so it goes on till 14 actually, okay. And, and he goes, goes on to say that it's not about works, it's about faith. It's, about, uh, it's a detailed explanation of righteousness by faith alone, okay. Uh, and uh, again in Ephesians 2 uh, verses 8 and 9, if someone could read that. That's why only two verses, so you can read that. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9. Oh, you got to unmute you guys or what? No, I think you can unmute yourself. Uh, anyone? Ajit, you want to read that? Is your Bible ready, Ajit? Uh, not yet, yeah. not yet. 8 and 9. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9. I think it's Ephesians 2. Go ahead. Uh, okay, uh, I'll read it. Anyone else has got it? They can read it. Just unmute yourself and read it. Ephesians 2, 8, eight and, nine. and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Yeah. Okay, I think we all know those verses. We know the general... Okay, you got to mute yourself. Fine. Uh, general theology that has come from uh, St. Paul, which is it's not anything you do that gets you your salvation. It is just your belief. Okay, And then there is a pattern. If you believe with your uh, mind and confess with your mouth, uh, then you are saved. Okay, I mean, let me just get that verse actually. Okay, now this, this theology of Paul's is what uh, Martin Luther uh, brought in as the Reformation. Okay, uh, in fact, uh, when he read uh, uh, James, he wanted to tear it out of the Bible, Martin Luther. He says, therefore, St. James' epistle is really an epistle of straw compared to these others, for it has nothing of the nature of the gospel about it. This is what Martin Luther said. Okay? He didn't actually ask to be, to be taken out, but he was not too impressed with what it was preaching. Okay? Even in the text, there are only one or two references to Jesus throughout the five chapters. Okay, I'm not sure how many chapters. But, uh, and it's mostly about doing. Okay, uh, Martin Luther, as you all may or may not know, uh, uh, his uh, teaching has, is, uh, has been summarized into five, uh, what they call five sola statements. Okay, sola scriptura, which means by scripture alone, scripture over tradition. Sola fide, which means by faith alone, faith over works. Then sola gratia, by grace, okay, grace over merit. Uh, and then there are two more, which were add-ons like sola Christo, which is through Christ alone, and soli dio gloria, all glory to God. Okay, so this was the, these are the tenements under which the Reformation took place and people broke away from the Catholic Church, which was saying, you got to do things to get penance and this and that, okay. Uh, so on the one hand, Paul is saying, if you add works to faith, you cannot be saved. Okay, and James is saying, if you don't have works with your faith, your faith, you're not saved. You know, and this is what he says in uh, in, in verse. Uh, uh, what is that verse? Yeah, can that faith save him? Verse fourteen says. So, in other words, you're saying you're not saved. And here we have both these respected apostles. Okay, uh, one saying one thing, and he said it in many places. James has written only one book. Okay, and James throughout that book saying. You got to do things. You got to do things. Okay. So how do we as believers reconcile with this? Because the one of the fundamental beliefs of our faith is the word of God is inerrant, is without error. Okay. Entirely accurate. These are most churches 
include that in the statement of faith, that the Bible is the inherent word of God, you know, inspired by the Holy Spirit. And, and that's what we should believe. Okay. So then we have these cases of what seems to be in contradiction to each other. And uh, as you know, when we started our Bible studies, I brought a lot of them from my personal uh, uh, meditations and writing of what, you know, things that look and sound different from what we believe. And here we have two of the senior apostles talking different things, or so it would seem, okay? Now, what you got to understand here is, <clears throat> in most of the situations where Paul is uh, addressing people when he's talking about salvation, when he's talking about faith, he is talking about how sinners become saints. Okay, you need to understand that very clearly. Okay, uh, <clears throat> whereas James, but if you know from the first chapter, and again, he uses the word brethren quite often, he says to the saints who have been dispersed in different parts of wherever. Okay, he is talking to believers, James. Okay, so James is explaining how saints who are justified through Christ without works of any kind become sanctified through the process of their faith explained or expressed through works. I hope that's not too complicated. This difference is very important to understand. Paul, in most cases, is explaining how sinners become saints. James, in this book, is explaining how saints who are justified become sanctified. And I, I don't know much about that process, but there is justification, sanctification, and glorification. That is the process for a believer, okay? Maybe Philip can explain that in more detail when we get to the commentary stage, okay? Now in Matthew 7, 7, 15 to 20, Jesus says, it is by their fruit that you will know whether a person who confesses uh, Jesus as Lord is truly a believer, okay? These are Jesus' words. And then from 21 to 23, he goes into a further explanation, right? Okay, I think that's the part where, okay, actually, let me get it. Okay, Matthew 7. Because what Jesus has to say on a subject matters a lot, right? <laughs> it's critical. Matthew 7, 21. <clears throat> yeah, he says, <clears throat> not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven, okay? But, he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Wow. <laughs> Jesus emphasized works. Okay. I don't think we need to go any further. Okay. But still, uh, if you take uh, 1 John 3.10, okay, it says, By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice, I'm underlining practice, who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. This is the English Standard Version. Okay, <clears throat> I think that's quite clear what James is talking about and what Paul is talking about. And maybe people have had confusion about that. I have had confusion. Why is this guy saying faith without works is uh, dead? And Paul is saying, no, faith with the works uh, uh, means that you can boast. And uh, God gave it free from his grace so that no one can boast. Okay, so there's justification and then there's sanctification. Okay, for the sanctification, you have to show your faith through your works. It is what will show that you truly do believe. It is by their fruit that you will know them. Okay, so even though this chapter, this second section of this chapter is fairly straightforward, it can cause confusion uh, and, and develop uh, even heresies maybe, okay? Uh, but it's need, we need to understand that it's being addressed to two different kinds of people, okay? Paul is explaining how one goes from earth to heaven and James is explaining how one brings heaven down to earth. Okay, this is not, these are not my words, okay? I, but I thought it was pretty neat, okay? Then James goes on in verse uh, 22 to talk about Abraham, okay? Uh, and then a little later, Rahab. Okay, now Abraham, I have sent you all some clippings that, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
when god first told him about his uh, uh, the promise okay it does say abraham believed god and it was accounted to him as righteousness okay but couple of months before sarah was to conceive when the, those angels came by and said next year this time you'll have a child they both scoffed and mocked okay that i'm talking about a couple of months before conceiving less than a year before isaac was born the word of god says they both scoffed and tried to explain human physiology to the angels okay that's come on i'm dead already and my womb was already dried up what are you talking about you know uh, although at that time initially abraham believed it by that after waiting 25 years he was a little bit skeptical okay <laughs> so this is not what james is talking about about abraham's works no you know uh, 20 years plus okay at least that the, the original exclam uh, the ex verse which says abraham believed is in uh, chapter 15 of genesis okay and uh, the test of uh, sacrificing isaac is in chapter 22 okay uh, so he has lived a life of faith but god still needed to test him to see how valid his faith was okay and his faith was not established until God tested him with Isaac. Okay? I mean, we need to understand that he went, he, he obeyed, and it is through that work of actually putting him on the altar, tying him down, putting him on the altar over the pieces of wood, that God was convinced about his faith. Okay? Okay. Does God need convincing? I don't know. But... Uh, uh, in this particular case, yes, he was testing Abraham to see how far he would go. And we need to understand about testing and uh, situation because we, we, we say God is all-knowing, okay? But as I said before, he is all-knowing, and he is all-powerful, but he does not interfere with our free will. And Abraham had the free will to ignore God and say, how would God ask me to kill my son? After all, he's the one who gave him to me, and he's supposed to be the, you know, uh, uh, a blessing to many generations. Let me just take this down. Okay, I got. It. Look, when I am in my Bible study, I'll call you after. Okay, yeah. Okay, so it, it was through that testing that God promoted him. Okay, we read in the first chapter how through our trials and tribulations, depending on how we respond, okay, we get promoted to the next level of service unto God. And this is exactly what uh, God did with Abraham and Isaac. Okay. Uh, now, in the case of Rahab, again, uh, she let them in, and I guess that's her justification stage. Uh, but the sanctification came when she let them out another way. Okay, uh, and if you notice, both these people who are being highly commended by James for their works, if you look at the basic action, Abraham was asked to commit murder. The Ten Commandments, one of them says, thou shall not kill, and apparently the translation, current translation is, thou shalt not murder. Okay, it's not about killing in war. Okay, and somewhere else, maybe not in the Ten Commandments, of, although it does say thou shall bear, not bear false witness. In many parts of the Bible, it says that you should not lie. God hates a liar. Okay, and a, a Rahab lied. Okay, she lied to the people who came when they were still hiding in a cupboard. She said, oh, they, they already left, you know. <laughs> and uh, so, yet, God favored both of them. Okay, so sometimes you don't want to stick to the letter of the law. This is another thing. Uh, that uh, I need to tell you all, you know, you need to, uh, Jesus uh, came and he said, when people asked him about the Sabbath and all, he said, look, if one of you has a donkey and it falls in a hole on Sabbath, are you going to wait till Monday morning, or sorry, Sunday morning to come and pick it up? No, you will not. You will pick it up. Okay, so you need to understand why the law was given, he was telling them. Okay, and that's why he comprised the law into the two uh, royal commandments, so to speak. Thou shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself, okay? Uh, and, and anyway, and again, talking about murder and lying, let me just go to Revelations 21, verses 7 and 8. Am I going too fast? Uh, I'll slow down a little bit. You guys are all on mute anyway. Revelations 21, verse 7 to 8 says, The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. The murderers and liars are included in this list in Revelation of all places. Okay? 
and what did abraham agree to do of course god god uh, prevented him from doing it but actually when he brought the brought the dagger or whatever it was down okay and they they have uh, they have lied actually she lied to the people who came ask me where are, what happened to those people who came you know so we need to understand that it's not the letter of the law that matters okay when god, when jesus gave the royal commandments those are the things for new uh, new testament believers to uh, apply in their lives and in that uh, even though love is an uh, we could say it's an emotion although the uh, word of god uh, preachers like to say love is a commandment okay uh, there is action that follows that shows that we love god or we love our neighbors okay and that's what james is talking about here if someone comes to you and says i'm hungry okay you're not going to say okay brother let me pray with you god in your might and power we can uh, please feed this brother you are more than able to do it father uh, and we know you're willing so i pray that you will bring food for this brother tomorrow and your fridge is full by the way okay <laughs> and then you send him on his way james is saying you stupid fellow what are you talking about okay what are you talking about you think all your profession of your faith is going to stand in front of god when you've done this to a brother who's come and told you he doesn't have his next meal okay so he's very clear on this okay uh on faith with works okay and also in corinthians second corinthians 5 uh, uh sorry ephesians 2 we read 8 and 9 okay uh which was about uh being saved by grace and uh, not not of works that anyone should boast but look at what verse 10 says for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them okay immediately after saying that uh, our salvation is by grace and not by works lest anyone should boast immediately after that next verse he says we are created for good works by through Jesus Christ okay we are created in Jesus Christ means we are born again we are recreated and what for for good works jesus said by your fruit you will know them okay and our good works each one of our good works is uh, is prepared beforehand by god that we should walk in them okay uh, i have come to almost the end of my uh, what do you put it so anyway never mind uh, but you look at just one example okay david and goliath you know when david goes to meet goliath he professes his faith to De- uh, goliath you know that right that portion how dare you da 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 okay whatever but then he didn't stay with just profession he picked up the five stones okay and it was his faith plus the stones that killed goliath not his faith alone not the stones alone uh, someone asked why did he pick up five stones because you know he killed him with the first stone anyway no apparently goliath had four brothers okay and they might come after him so he was ready for uh, anything okay but uh, they didn't turn up they got scared and they all ran away right that's what it says and also peter when uh, he saw jesus walking on the water he said lord i want to come to you jesus said come and he had to step out of the boat okay he had to step out of the boat uh, and that's what we need to do what we have to understand is uh, if our faith life is not expressed through works which show that we love god and that we love our neighbor james is saying there is a question mark about your faith okay uh and i want to end with that and we'll go to the video now okay let me just shut this because i don't think i i've got proverbs 14 12 up i'm not sure what that is let me just uh, see that also perhaps i can read that okay proverbs 14 12 yeah if we try to follow our own ways okay without the word of god what happens is uh there is a way which seems right to a man but its end is the way of death so works alone will lead to death okay <laughs> and faith alone also will lead to death uh, uh is what james is saying i i think he means the 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 what do you say the the the, the death of growth okay, you are born again but you don't grow okay uh anyway so that is the thing so let's not believe in works alone or let's not believe in faith alone or both are absolutely correct we are justified by faith but we have to allow ourselves to be sanctified by the holy spirit 
And when the fruit of the Holy Spirit comes into our lives, you know the, all the fruit, right? The nine fruit. I don't know them by heart. Maybe we should make it a lesson to learn it. Uh, it will be expressed in action. When those, uh, uh, the fruit of the Spirit come into our lives, it just has to be expressed in action. There's no other way that people will know that we've got the fruit of the Spirit. All right. So now actually, uh, Francis Chan's uh, exposition is much uh, simpler, uh, but also powerful. So let me go there and, uh, okay, I've got to do it through uh, sharing, right? Yeah. Getting there, share with you. That's not this. There's only seven minutes, so we should be okay for time. Pay close attention as I just read this one verse from the Bible. It's James 2, verse 14. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? James is continuing on this theme of talking versus doing. And here he just makes it so clear and somewhat terrifying. He goes, what good is it? Does, it? does it do any good if a person says, makes some sort of profession of faith, but he has no works? And then he asks that question, can that faith save him? And it's an obvious no. Okay, look, look at the passage yourself. I mean, he's saying, man, is there any good in talking? He's just proving, like, you know, saying that you're a Christian, saying that, oh, I remember when I was baptized, I remember this. He goes, what good does that do? He goes, in fact, can that faith save him? And the obvious answer is no. And, and, and he, he goes a, a further, and he gives an illustration. He goes, look, if a brother is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to him, go in peace, be warmed and filled without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. He, he goes on to illustrate, he goes, what if you see someone who's starving uh, or, or poorly dressed? Like, like there have been times when I've been in other countries and I've actually seen people that are, that, that are just skin and bones. I mean, literally days to live. And I, and I think about how disgusting would it be if I just looked at them and go, man, I, you guys be, be warm, be filled. Hope it works out okay for you. He goes, what, what good is that? In the same way, he says, like, when you talk and call yourself a Christian, but there's no real actions to show that, he says, it's dead. In fact, that phrase, verse 17, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. I, I don't know if James could have picked stronger language. Like, it doesn't matter what you say. If you don't act, it's dead dead. Your faith, I don't care how much you talk about it, it's pointless, it's worthless, it's dead. It's like if I, if I told my kids, go, hey, I got you a puppy, but it's dead. I mean, it's just like repulsive, it's, it's pointless, and he's saying, this is how bad it is. And, and I think a lot of times we don't think this way. We're going, oh, man, that guy's such a great teacher, or he's this, or he's that, and it's like, no, it doesn't matter what they say about their faith unless they're doing something. It's completely worthless. They're not even saved. And then he goes on and he says, but, but someone will say, you have faith, I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I'll show you my faith by my works. He goes, you may go, well, that's you. You're more of a doer. And he goes, what are you talking about? He goes, you, you, you're saying that you have faith and, and I have works. He goes, look, Go ahead, talk about your faith all day. I'm gonna show you that I believe by the things that I do. You're gonna look at my life and go, man, there's no way he would do those things unless he really believes that there is a God up there watching him. But then here's the terrifying thought. He, he says in the next phrase, he goes, you believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. 
He goes, so your theology, like, like he quotes there from Deuteronomy 6, 5, which a, a devout Jew would say that at the beginning of every day, at the end of every day, you know, that the, the Lord our God is one. He goes, you believe that? Great. He goes, so do the demons in hell. In fact, the demons take it a step further. They shudder. It, it's a phrase meaning it's like your hair, the, the hair on your arms is just standing up on end because you're so terrified. He goes, the demons in hell are terrified of God. So what's the difference between you and a demon? You say you believe in God. You might even have a fear of God. See, the difference is action. The difference is that demons, even though they know there's a God, even though they fear him, they refuse to transform their lives. They refuse to come under his leadership. But he's saying, look, your theology isn't enough. Just saying you believe in a powerful God, all that does is put you on par with the demons in hell. And then he makes this statement. He says, do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? He's going, okay, do, do you need more? Do you need more? I, I mean, I already told you that, that you're, you're worse than the demons, but then he goes, do you, do you want me to show you, foolish person, you idiot? You still don't believe this? Well, what more do you want? I, I got to prove to you that faith without works is dead. So then he goes to Abraham, whom they would have looked up to so much and explains how, look, even him, he was justified by his works. His works showed that he believed. And then after that, he, he speaks of Rahab, because they may go, well, that's Abraham, and he's such an amazing man. He goes, well, then how about Rahab? Rahab was a prostitute. He gives these extremes, and he's going, look, everyone, it's about actions, okay? Abraham was about actions. Rahab was an, about actions. He goes, you idiot, what more do I have to show you? And at the very end, he just says, for as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. He goes, you know how once your soul leaves your body, you're dead? He goes in the same way. Once there's no actions to go with your talk, he goes, you're also dead. But this is a strong passage, and you need to look at your life in light of this and not just assume, because everyone tells you, oh, you're... Your faith is so beautiful. Oh, you're such a great teacher, whatever it may be. He goes, look at your actions to make sure that your faith isn't worthless. And if you want a quick test right now to figure out, are you just a listener and not a doer? Then evaluate, what did you do this last week? What did you do after you heard the message from last week? Were there any actions? Okay. That's pretty powerful. All right, let me just get started. Okay, so he, he uh, touched on certain other topics, but uh, what I explained was uh, a bit more, and uh, that was from another preacher. Actually, that preacher's, uh, maybe I'll send you all the link. Uh, uh, it's about 15 minutes ago. So, uh, so we've seen in this part of the second chapter, the, the, the marriage between faith and works, okay? And it is a marriage, it has to come together. Otherwise, both are dead in a Christian's life, okay? We have to grow. And our growth is only through uh, expressing our belief, expressing our faith through action. God has prepared us beforehand for the good works, okay? That's what it says. After saying that uh, you, you cannot add anything to uh, faith, which is by grace alone, 8, 9, and 10, okay, of Ephesians uh, chapter 2, I said, right? Uh, keep that, you'll understand. Verse 10 is so important. People stick to only verses 8 and 9, okay? Uh, we, the good works have to follow. Jesus himself said it is by their fruit that you'll know them, okay? Uh, but fruit by itself, there are other, I mean, like we, we all know there are lots of people who do good deeds, okay? They don't have to be Christians per se. For a Christian, the good works have to flow from their faith from their belief, okay? Uh, it, it's, it should flow spontaneously. It's not a requirement per se, although James seems to make it sound like a requirement, but it's more that he's concerned with the spiritual growth of the believer. He's addressing believers. He's addressing saints. He calls them brethren many times during the, uh, the book, okay? Whereas Paul, when he talks about salvation and what is required for salvation, 
he's talking about how sinners become saints, as I said. Okay, good. Right, then, oh, we've got 15 minutes. Oh my God, that's great. Uh, Dilip, uh, can I have some, uh, let me ask you unmute. Yeah, some comments. <clears throat> yeah, okay. No, I, I, I know this has always been a big thing about they contradict each other. Yeah, but I don't think they actually do. Because, uh, you know, I know it's true that good deeds can never earn a salvation and true faith always results in a changed life and good deeds. Yeah. So Paul, I think also you could look at, as you said, at the, at the, uh, the people they're addressing by the letters, like Romans is being addressed to people who are, uh, you know, uh, who, who were formerly Jews and, you know, following works. Like, like if you look at the Ten Commandments, there was a lot of <clears throat> things that others could see. You know, you do, do should not commit murder, you should not commit adultery, you should not this thing. But in, in, in our, in, uh, what I call the kingdom principles, after what Jesus is saying is that it's in the, in the Ten Commandments, he said you should not commit adultery. Jesus says that even if you look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery. So you're, we have a much more higher thing that people cannot see. You know, it's the motives in our heart that's more important. So I think, as you said, uh, you know, James is addressing it very clearly that, so I think both go together. If you have true faith, I think these come automatically because you will have changed life. I mean, if you just, James is, what he's trying to say is against the intellectual desertion, you know, that, oh yeah, I know, God is there and he's fantastic. And, you know, as Jackie said, as Stan also said, he's fantastic and uh, I love it, I love him and, you know, but we do nothing. And, and that's, that's not the right thing. So I think, as you said, both go together. I don't think they contradict each other. I think uh, someone has true faith, he will be a changed person and, and good deeds will follow. You know, you cannot have true faith without being good deeds because God will change you. And uh, and I think that's part of the thing. So I think both go together and both are addressing two different people. Yeah, yeah. They really don't contradict each other. I don't think they contradict each other, although may, a lot of people make a lot of big things about they contradict each other. Uh, even Martin Luther they, thought it was contradicting. Yeah, so. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but I, I don't think I don't think they really contradict each other. Because if you really yeah, have true faith, you know, uh, you will uh, you will be a changed person. And, and uh, you know, you will then, good deeds will follow. Because God is then, you become, God, Jesus becomes the head of your life, you know. And uh, and he will direct your paths. The Holy Spirit will direct your paths. And obviously, good deeds will follow. It's not, yeah. it's not that you think through the whole thing. Yeah. I think both go together. Uh, they really don't contradict each other, but I think they were more in, in the. I think Paul is trying to say that, say that good deeds can never earn you salvation. And I think that's what he was trying to, the message he was yeah, giving. Absolutely. James is quite clear. I think this is the only book that James has written. He's that's quite clear. True. Guys, don't think intellectually that you're a great guy, you know. Because even demons know that, you know, Jesus is there and he's, he's God. But uh, so I think, I think it's uh, both go together. That's what I think. Absolutely. I mean, uh, the other guy uses the word marriage between faith and works. Yeah, yeah I think that's a, I think that's a good analogy, I think. Marriage yeah, and good. Uh, Bauchan, anything? Unmute, unmute. You, you have to unmute her because I couldn't unmute myself, by the way. Okay. That's what I put. Oh, but uh, people calling me at this time. Okay, come. Okay, come, okay, come. Okay, come. Okay, I think the final solution is to have the mind of Christ. Yeah. Uh, do what Christ did. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, verse thirteen. I believe verse thirteen is more important than all these uh, uh, verses. Previous, verse thirteen. Ah, uh, then The previous mm -hmm. chapter. Yeah. Uh, chapter two, verse thirteen. Karuna kani kya tha? Mujhe karuna illa tha naayi vidhi undaago. Karuna to show mercy is the, the right way to the needy. Yeah. yeah. Good, good, good works. Good works, good works, faith and all. But good works for, for our benefit is not that matters. Good works. Needy at all over a high can at all. Uh, it's not a good thing. Yeah. 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 
നന്നായി വരണോ എന്നുള്ള ഒരു ഫെയ്ത്ത് അല്ല കഷ്ടത്തിൽ ഇരിക്കുന്നവരെ ഏത് സാഹചര്യത്തിലും സഹായിക്കുന്ന പ്രവൃത്തി ആയിരിക്കണം നമ്മുടെ വിശ്വാസം ഫ്രീഡോ Yeah. If it doesn't, then somewhere something is lacking. So that is, a, uh, what can we say, um, something by which we should examine our actions, our words. Yeah, Francis Chan said something at the very end. How many of you all heard that? One simple test is to see what you did last week after hearing last week. Ah, correct, correct. <laughs> did you just ponder it on the word? <laughs> anyway uh, so yeah he is coming you know i think the the chair the book continues in the same heart eating vein okay uh, about uh, and into more practical examinations and uh, imagine if someone comes and you just say brother i'll pray with you and some of us are such good prayers okay <laughs> prayer warriors even and then uh, we call on all of god's attributes to come and save the guy and we don't go to our fridge and take out something and give to him you know and uh, he's saying you're you're foolish you're stupid that's what james is saying okay in fact francis chan uses the word idiot you know so uh, it's that powerful what he's trying to say of course james was one of the i think the last book to be added in the canon of uh, the bible okay and uh, and it was mainly because of this because it emphasized works whereas the overall theology is not about works but i guess the fathers that put it together realize that he's talking to a different set of people and uh, paul is talking about faith with faith uh, by uh, you know what do you say uh, uh, grace alone is the true gospel absolutely we are justified by faith alone there is a, there is nothing that needs to be added on when jesus said it is finished it was finished okay and everything that was required for our salvation was completed at the resurrection technically speaking at the res- resurrection not at the cross even though we like to say at the cross yeah. okay it was through the resurrection that uh, we are saved it is the resurrection power that gives us new life okay uh, so that is done but james was addressing some other people and i guess uh, god inspired the people who were taking the decisions whether to add the book or not through a good uh, revelation of what the book is talking about and this is what we have discussed today yeah Anyone else wants to say something Geeta you always ah Ajoy is also there so definitely both of you should say something we are we are ahead of time okay go ahead um no grace uh, in my understanding uh, see faith does not come by our efforts but by grace yeah ille uh, um, uh i mean there's a i, I can be uh, <laughs> and we need to talk a little more on that probably it also is a uh, gift uh faith also is a gift ah uh, is a gift that is whatever we do to earn it we may not get the true um, spirit of it but uh, god's grace alone gives us the faith and uh, i guess it is through the life that we live in the trials that we face you know when he finds that his child is lost and uh, you know uh, maybe reading the bible maybe praying uh, you know timely prayers every day but that actual spiritual uh, experience only comes by uh, god as a gift from god and uh, then while in the spirit if we don't 
uh, follow. I mean, like Dilip said, we have to. I mean, it will come automatically and truly. Are there? It is a it is a natural uh, result of the faith that we do. And if we don't, then we have lost that faith somewhere along the way. So we need to renew our, um, you know, the the believer really? status. Are there? Are there with God? So I think uh, for all believers, all through life, there are moments of, um, you know, disbelief or losing that status with God. And uh, then we re, uh, you know, gain it only in humility and, you know, uh, in, uh, yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. you're right, actually. But uh, regarding the first part, we, see, uh, faith is a gift from God. But as I, I explained earlier, See, there is this element of free will which plays a very important part in our uh, falling to sin as well as our salvation okay falling into sin was an expression of free will okay when eve decided to disobey god okay and uh, got her husband also into it it was their free will through the enticement of the serpent okay in the same way god has given us the free gift of salvation there is no works associated or needed with it but we have to decide to accept that gift. Okay, so it's not like dumped on us by, as I've used the word fiat. I, mean, I, like, I like to use the word fiat. Fiat is by law. God could have saved everyone in the world for all time. Okay, he's God. He can easily do that. But no, there is an element of free will involved. We have to, the gift is there. But unless you receive it, it's your action. Unless you don't get it. it is, you, don't, you don't need to pay anything. It is a gift. Okay, just simple definition of the word gift. It is a gift. Nothing is due, to, due against it. Okay, but you have to decide to receive the gift. Okay, and if that gift is not received properly, it will show in your inaction, as you said. As that's what you were saying. Okay, if we do believe in Jesus, as, as James said earlier, the royal commandments, those two commandments, you know, that you've got to love you. You cannot love your neighbor in in uh, completely as yourself if you don't love God. It's not possible. You know. And the other way also, you can't love God and, and not love your neighbor, you know. So this is what he's expressing. Good. Okay, what about Ajoy? Ajoy, just unmute your... Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Now, Mohan, yeah. my views on this topic may be quite different. Okay, we want to hear it then. And, you know, as I said, it's all very simplistic way. Yeah. To me, I think of, you know, in the current day context, okay. one would compare James to a leftist okay. or a communist. Okay. Both of them are very concerned about helping the less fortunate. Okay. And, you know, in some of Christ's teachings, he has emphasized, well, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. And whatever you do for the least of these, my brethren, you do unto me. Maybe yeah. James's gift was more on the human qualities of required for Christians. And the other aspect is we can say, yes, we must have faith in God. And it's just not, I, I mean, as I said, I'm a common man, so my views may be different but you tend to have more and more faith in God, sometimes through difficult situations, when you just needed something, some guidance, and you put your trust entirely on him, and it worked. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you tend to have greater faith in God. And lastly, I want to... Uh, as I said, I'm a common man, so it you know, may be very simple. But I think what Bao Chan said is absolutely right. 
wherever we find a need, somebody in need, if we can stretch our hands out, that's the type of uh, things that Christ would expect of us. These are my very humble views. Yeah, good. They're not in contradiction with anything that we've discussed uh, uh, till now. The only uh, additional point I'd like to make is he's addressing it to believers. This whole letter is addressed to believers. So it's not a general statement like a communist manifesto or anything like that. He's talking about people who are of the faith this is what you should be doing, okay? Not that this is what everyone should be doing, no. This is what people of the faith should be doing to show that they are faith. That's the only add-on I'd want to put, put there, nothing more than, uh, everything you said is absolutely correct, yeah. Good, Marmin, you wanna say something? Oh, yes. No, not really, come on. Okay then. Great. I think it was a good session. We actually finished exactly on time. I don't even know how that's possible. But uh, praise God. Good stuff. Okay. So uh, I don't know. Maybe next week I might take uh, a break and discuss something else. But let me see. This is a, I'm enjoying pre preparing these. And I want to thank Dilip for suggesting it. Because I guess he saw me struggling with topics and timing and everything else. Okay. <laughs> so this one, I, I, because I read up others also. I, I get Actually, in the morning, I get quite excited. Uh, as I note down my notes, you know, I really get excited. Sometimes I jump out of the chair, start praising God, I'm walking up and down, you know, so much so. Like when, when the guy said that, uh, you know, yeah, Paul is talking how a, a sinner becomes a saint. And James is talking about how a saint, uh, what is that, uh, gets sanctified, okay? Uh, I, I just, uh, as I said, I jumped up. <laughs> okay. So thank you all. And uh, so let's go yeah, it, I just, would have been, yeah it, it would have been very symbolic and appropriate had he wanted to do the t-shirt I had given you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was you know, poor and destitute, you gave me a t-shirt. Okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah, the poorest uh, man is... It will be credited to you as righteousness, okay? <laughs> okay, carry on. See you guys. God bless all of you all. Okay, bye-bye. Take care. Thanks, guys. Bye. Take Bye. care. Thanks for the course. Yeah. Okay. Bye.